In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this professional looking interior for KDP using Adobe InDesign. Now, of course, you don't want to copy this interior or anybody else's. This is just a tutorial to show you how you can create your own using this particular software or another similar software. And in order to create an interior like this, you're going to need a software such as Adobe InDesign or Affinity Publisher. You can also use Adobe Illustrator, but it's a little bit more difficult. And when it comes to changing things in your interior, it's time consuming. And I'll show you in a bit why Adobe InDesign and Affinity Publisher are the most ideal. Now, of course, you can also use Canva, but I would highly recommend that anyone who's doing low content publishing that you learn to use more professional software such as the ones I mentioned. And you can buy courses for fairly cheap on websites such as Udemy or Skillshare. Now, before I create any interiors, what I like to do is look at other people's interiors to get some sort of inspiration. Now, I've opened a few here to get ideas for how I should create my own interior. So I usually open up several tabs and just check through their interiors to see what I like, what I dislike, what I want to include in my interiors, etc. And then once I've done that, what I like to do is just make a rough sketch on a piece of paper. So I have this notepad here where I have all of my interiors. I plan it out. I don't just open up a software and start creating the interior. I write it down first. I draw it out. So firstly, I include the size and then the price. And then I just draw out a rectangle and then I put in labels. So you can see that with this particular one, plant name, date acquired, etc. And then what I also like to do sometimes is in this interior, I don't have it, but sometimes what I do is I have like a differentiation column where I try to add in unique features. So what this does is it gives me an edge over the competition as I'm providing more value compared to their books and interiors. OK, so what I've done now is I've opened up Adobe InDesign here. So I'm just going to rename this to Plant Care Journal Interior. My size is going to be, as I've decided, 7 times 10 inches. And my page count is going to be 120 pages. I've decided on the page count based on other books that are out there. If other books are 120 pages, then you also want to do something similar. You don't want to give customers less value because it's possible that they compare the page count. And based on the fact that the other books have more pages, they may choose to buy them instead of yours. And then over here, I'm just going to leave the margins as they are. Usually half an inch or 0 0.5 inches is perfect. So now what I'm going to do is just click on create. OK, so I have my blank interior here. And if I click on pages, you can see that I have all of my pages here. Now, one thing about Adobe InDesign and also Affinity Publisher, which I like, is that it has this feature called master pages. So what this does is if I go into one of these master pages and draw something like I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Now, later on, if I don't like it and I want to change something, all I have to do is go back onto the master page and just change it. So I'm just going to adjust the size. And you can see that it's adjusted the size on all of the pages. Whereas if you use a software such as Adobe Illustrator or Canva, if you make any adjustments, you have to delete all of the pages and then you have to make copies of them once again based on your page count. So in my case, it's 120 pages. I'll have to make 120 copies. So what I'm going to do now is make sure that my master pages are selected. I'm going to start making the interior. So the first thing I'm going to do is make some lines. So obviously this is based on the planning that I showed you previously. And then I'm just going to duplicate this by holding onto option on my keyboard and then just dragging it down. And then I'm just going to make a few more copies of these lines. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to space them out equally. And usually my chosen figure for spacing them out is 0.8 or 0.9 centimeters because I find that this is the most ideal when it comes to any sort of writing books. So what I've done is I've selected them. Now I'm going to click on this align button here and then click on align to key object, making sure that the top one is selected. I'm just going to put in 0.9 centimeters and then click on this button here. So as you can see, the spacing between each of my lines are 0.9 centimeters. Now, what some people do is they don't take line spaces into consideration and they just guess the distance between each lines. They just make the lines according to how they see fit. And sometimes what happens is uh, when the customer gets the book and they want to write something, there's not enough spacing between the lines and it makes it difficult for them. And as a result, they often leave negative reviews. So what you want to do is you want to avoid these things at all costs and think in the long term. You want to create a high quality book, a high quality interior, and you want to keep selling it over the long run for many months and possibly many years to come. 
So what I'm going to do now is start adding in my text. So I'm just going to click on this text tool here and then just draw out a rectangle over the top line. So I'm just going to type in here, plant details in all caps. And then I'm just going to change the font to a different font. So I'm just going to change it to one of my favorite fonts, which is called Montserrat. And I'm just going to choose bold as my font. I'm just going to resize this a little bit to move the text closer to the line and then adjust the font size a little bit to make it a little bit bigger. The next thing I'm going to do is this is going to be a section. So I'm just going to increase the stroke size of this to make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to increase it to 2.5. And then I'm just going to move this text up a little bit and that should be perfect. Now I'm just going to make a copy of this and then type in the other labels. So plant name. And I'm just going to reduce the size of this to 12 and change the characteristics of the font to medium. Move it down a little bit. And then I'm just going to duplicate it and put it underneath and add in my second label, which is date acquired. And then copy this to the side for the next label, which is from. And then once again, but this time price. Now you want to space these out according to what the customer will write. Now if they're only going to write the date in a short format, then you don't need to provide too much space. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my second section, which is care requirements. The first section is plant details. The second section is care requirements. So firstly, I'm going to increase the stroke size once again to 2.5. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this top label and put it here. And then I'm just going to type in care requirements in all caps. And then I'm just going to resize this. And then once again, create more lines and space them out accordingly. And then I'm going to add in the labels which fall under the care requirements section. So after doing that, my interior looks like this. So as you can see, I've added in these labels here and I've also added in this new section, watering and repotting dates. I'm going to create a box. So I've just clicked on this rectangle tool here and then I'm just going to draw out a rectangle. And then over here, I'm going to add in a stroke so that the rectangle is visible. The next thing I'm going to do is make some lines. So I'm just going to draw some here. And then once again, I'm going to add in a stroke. And then I'm just going to make copies of this. So as you can see here that some of these they've gone out of alignment. So I'm just going to select all of them and then I'm just going to click on this one here, align horizontal center. And now all of them are equally aligned. So I'm just going to highlight all of them again and then make more copies. And once that's done, I'm going to add in a label here. So I'm just going to copy this and then type in watering dates. And then I'm just going to make this bigger and just center it. And one thing to know is you want to make sure that there's some spacing between the first set of lines and the title. I've seen many interiors, they make the mistake of having the first set of lines really close to the label. So basically what this does is it renders this particular line useless. So the customer can only start from here, which can be frustrating to them. The next thing I'm going to do is draw another box. And this time it's going to be labeled as repotting dates. So once again, I'm going to add in a stroke. And then what I'm going to do is copy these lines and then move them over to the new box. And then once again, I'm going to duplicate the label and this time it's going to be repotting dates. So I'm just going to change this. The next thing I'm going to do is create the second part of the interior. So for the second part, it's just mainly going to be lines for writing notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate some of these lines and move them over to the right. So holding down the Alt key once again, I'm just going to move them and then I'm just going to create several copies. And then once again, you want to make sure that the spacing between the lines are equal. So I'm just going to select all of them, go over to properties, click on align, align to key object, 
making sure that the first one is selected I'm going to type in 0 0.9 centimeters and then I'm just going to click on this button here there's an extra one at the bottom in the margin so I'm just going to remove it the next thing I'm going to do is create a sketch box so what I'm going to do is shorten some of these lines so I'm just going to select these ones here and then I'm just going to make them shorter now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box so I'm going to click on the rectangle tool and then just draw out a box so what's going to happen here is the customer's gonna if they want to they have the option to either draw out their plan or stick in a picture of it the next thing I'm going to do is create some dots here so I'm just going to click and hold on this rectangle tool here and then select the ellipse tool so I'm going to draw out a circle and then I'm just going to adjust the size of this to 0 0.025 inches and then the same with the height as well so I'm just going to copy this and paste it here and then enter so now when I zoom in I have a little dot here so now I'm going to duplicate this so I'm going to keep doing this until the whole box is covered with dots and then once that's done you should have something that looks like this now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce the opacity to make them grey so I'm going to click on this arrow here and then over here where it says tint I'm just going to type in 50 so what this does is it makes it more appropriate for drawing and by having them this light grey colour it provides a guide for drawing but at the same time it's not too dark that it causes an issue so after completing this page I now have an interior that looks like this so now what I want to do is I want to add in an index to this particular journal and to do this I'm going to have to create a new master so I'm going to click on this button here and then click on new master and then this one's going to be called B, the other one's called A, and then I'm going to click on OK. So now I have a blank master which I can use to create an index. So what I'm going to do first is head back over to the A master and then just copy one of these labels. It doesn't matter which one, so I'm just going to copy one and then paste it here. And I'm just going to type in index. I'm going to center align it and then I'm just going to place it at the top and then once that's done I'm going to copy some of the lines from a master so I'm just going to click on copy here and then paste just move them to the top and then create some copies to make more lines and then once that's done I'm going to resize them just move them down a little bit and then I'm just going to add in a label here so plant name the next thing I'm going to do is duplicate them and then this time it's going to be page number so I'm going to make a copy of this and then type in page number center align it a little bit and then I'm just going to move these lines to the bottom so that this top line doesn't become useless there should be enough space between the top line and the label so now that I have my left index page I'm just going to duplicate this to the right page so I'm going to highlight all of this click on command and G to group and then I'm just going to make a copy by holding the option key on my keyboard and just dragging it across okay so now I have my index pages the next thing I'm going to do is as you can see none of my pages have the B master applied to them they all have the A master applied so I'm going to select some of them and then I'm going to right click and then click on apply master to pages and over here where it says A master I'm going to change it to B master and then click on OK so as you can see here that the B master is now applied and it's filled with index pages and then from page 6 onwards it's the A master that's applied the next thing I'm going to do is add in page numbers so the way to do this is you want to create a text box at the bottom and then I'm just going to type in the number 1 center align it and then I'm just going to duplicate this to the right so holding on to the option key I'm just going to drag it across 
and then I'm just going to type in the number 2 and then I'm just going to highlight one of these numbers click on type insert special character markers and then current page number so as you can see this changes to the letter A but this is the master page and it's not the actual pages now if I go over to the pages you can see that after the index sections there's page numbers applied but well, there's an issue here where this one is uh, it should be 7 but it's 6 and then 2 and then this one goes to 8 so I'm going to head back over to the A master again and do the same thing with this one so I'm going to highlight it click on type insert special character markers and then current page number now this time if I go over to my plant pages you can see that the numbers are correct so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 etc there's no need for numbers on the index pages so I'm going to leave them as they are the next thing I've done is I've created this title page here which is pretty simple and I don't think it needs much explanation except that initially the A master was applied on page 1 so what I had to do was I had to right click on it and then click on apply master to pages and then over here I had to select none and then this page became blank and then I typed this in and then I've added in these lines here and then a copyright section at the bottom. Now before I export and finalize any interiors, I like to go through a checklist of things to make sure that there's no mistakes or quality issues with the interior. So I go through all of these things and I think the main thing is grammar check to make sure that none of the things on your interior are spelled incorrectly. And then once that's done, you want to export the interior. So I'm going to click on file and then export. And then I'm just going to save it on my desktop. So now I have my full and completed interior. So as you can see, it starts off with the title page and then it goes on to the index. And then finally the plant pages which are numbered. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, then don't forget to like it and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.